Okay, one second. So um, my partner in crime, is, uh, Mr. Artin Sarkisian, uh, he's attorney in law, we work on all the cases. Uh, he's an excellent lawyer. So the same victim I presented the, the other times, the Romanian pop singer, but this time it's about the importance of analyzing the suicide note in a uh, equivocal death investigation. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, this case is unique in the world, has so many elements from uh, the way of uh, the manner of death to a uh, stage crime scene, suicide note, how you determine the, the authority of the suicide note and so forth. So uh, in a short presentation, this is uh, the abstract we have, is about how we determine uh, if a suicide note was written by the victim or not. And this is specifically to the uh, suspicious death where we don't know if it was murder or it was uh, murder, homicide uh, simulated as suicide or suicide itself. Uh, this case is also interesting because it has two types of suicide note. One is a SMS uh, sent to herself, to the victim, the, uh, the day of the death. And the second one is a sentimental testament. And I'm going to present uh, the differences between the two. Um, in, about the suicide, and this I know that for all of you is so uh, uh, is such a no, uh, known subject, but I have to uh, stress that the suicide is a process. Exists in a spectrum. Uh, has a period of time when I start to have the suicide ideation, ma uh, mainly the active suicide ideation, till I complete the act itself. I commit the, uh, the suicide. The passive suicide ideation is that uh, how they differentiate is something like you think about. Never consider it, but like for an example, like now I work 14 hours per day, I'm stressed out, some family issues, work stress, uh, my program is changed on a daily basis. I'm so tired that I can put this on a, in a writing or post it somewhere and can be seen like a suicide note or I have uh, suicide thoughts, not at all. But it's a moment in my, in my life, in time when I'm tired. So people, they have to, investigators have to differentiate between the passive and the active. Uh, and then the suicide is uh, is completed. Uh, the role of suicide note in a death investigation might be an indication that individual committed suicide, and we have to make sure that we have to differentiate between authentic and fabricated suicide note, especially when you have a homicide um, simulated as, as a suicide then we have to determine what suicide though can help us to understand the reason for suicide. And it's not only for investigation, but furthermore can be used in preventing suicide uh, for others. And also is a message for family and friends. Uh, the equivocal death psychological autopsy uh, is different from the suicide psychological autopsy. This one is valuable because we, is related, the psychological autopsy is related to the equivocal death, not some, uh, not about a suicide. We know it was a genuine suicide. The only problem is that is very time consuming and not too many officers and in, in, uh, investigators are trained in uh, analyzing such, uh, such suicide notes. And there are lots of uh, theories and uh, uh, approaches and methodology to determine to, uh, to do a psychological autopsy. Uh, then we have uh, no. this equivocal death psychological autopsy includes in general information, marital status, education, occupation, achievements, failures. Uh, the, those are only a few examples. Secondly, we have history, the relationship. Uh, the history of suicide attempts, the lifestyle, drug, alcohol, abuse, religion, hobbies, so forth. 
and also reaction to stress and emotional upsets. Recent stressors, changes in lifestyle routine habits, and we have to assess the lethality, uh, lethality of the intention, the method used, and not too many researches that were done on the method chose, chosen by uh, someone either to commit suicide or to kill someone according to the cultural um, uh, background and also trying to simulate a suicide. We have, we of course, we need the details of death and the suicide note now. Uh, as I mentioned, the suicide note analysis is multidisciplinary. There are so many sciences they apply here, clinical psychology, forensic linguistic, um, uh, discourse analysis and so forth. There are lots of theories I have, uh, I didn't mention them all, there are way too many but we can use it to identify the motivational aspects of suicide and suicidal behavior. Patient, sender, uh, recipient, and it's nothing, it's not a face-to-face -face, uh, meeting. About this case, for those which are not familiar, why this case is, uh, is interesting, it was an equivocal death uh, domestic, we didn't know at the beginning if it was domestic uh, homicide, uh, husband killing the wife and uh, make her death, manner of death as uh, simulated as suicide. We don't know if it was, we don't know at that time if it was a true suicide. The cause of death was uh, the presence of over 400 millimeters of carbofuran, a very powerful pesticide. Of, we know for sure it was a staged crime scene. The crime scene was totally uh, contaminated and the case was closed as suicide. Though it was a faulty investigation and nobody proved the suicide. And together with the, uh, Mr. Artin, we are in the process of reopening the case very soon in court to prove that it was actually uh, a murder. But what we, oh, I'm going to present now is the suicide note. So about Madalena as an idea, she was extremely close with her parents and her brother and her brother's family, very close. She took care of them. Her parents, they were retired. She made sure that uh, um, she uh, compensated for financially for their uh, very low pension. Uh, she was married before and her first husband donated sperm for her to have in vitro, even after their divorce. She had numerous attempts of in vitro and uh, one, almost one year and a half before her death, she got pregnant. She has a very strong personality, a fighter. She has very high standard morals and she was very wealthy. The husband was close to his family too mother in particular, very aggressive, a cheater, very controlling, and he had nothing to his name. When they got into, when they got married, she had everything, cars, properties, uh, villa, money in the account, in bank accounts and so forth. He came with his suitcase. The timeline of the marriage, they did it three, four years before wedding, and you'll see why it's important uh, why those uh, details are important to analyze uh, the suicide note. So uh, for three, four years, uh, they lived separately uh, before the wedding. In that period, uh, one of her in vitro attempt was successful. She gave birth to the child in June, 2009. They moved together in her house. She just finished building to uh, the end of 2008, the beginning of 2009. That period. They married in October 2009. She, she was found that July 2010 on her birthday. Now, elements of the case, when I said that there were two suicide, so-called suicide notes, on the day of her death, uh, it was an SMN sent to herself, to her cell phone at 2.32 a.m. in the morning. Actually, 10 days after her funeral, the hus her husband gave the first interview and the linguistic uh, 
linguistically speaking, there are red flags, what, what he said in the interview. Uh, and uh, the same, the red flag is going to be found in September 2010 about this so-called sentimental testament. How is no? It was a written suicide note. He said that he found this, this uh, written testament in a, in her drawer in the night table. Actually, the police uh, they declared that they looked into that drawer. They couldn't find anything. Now, this is the SMS, and I'm going to give you uh, uh, the translation into English, but is exactly how it's in Romanian. So uh, if in English, the grammar is, is not perfect, that is how it's in Romanian and it's important to, to keep that, uh, to understand what is, uh, what the message is. What is in red? they are my notes so nobody is to blame all of you love me so much did everything for me pay attention to not only to uh the way uh, the lack of capital letters the dot uh, the grammar uh, spellings and everything because i try to keep it exactly how she it was in the phone the reason is as follow this was my first uh, red flag the day when she died that I read this message because no suicide person uses the reason, the word motive or the reason in their suicide notes. The word motive or reason is a word used by everyone else. Us as investigators, family, friends, what was the reason to kill herself or himself? So, um, and uh, two dots, cannot stand myself physically, that she, it was written in uh, capital letters, speaking. So cannot stand myself physically speaking, am defect a rebut. This is how I always been, but now I barely realize it, really. So uh, according to this sentence, Okay, the day when she committed suicide, she realized, okay, I, I don't like myself physically, let kill myself. That is how I translate it, yeah? I love you, my babe, husband. You did everything for me. I love our little angel, the child. I love you, mommy, daddy, Marianne, no comma in between. Marianne is her brother. Mikhaitza is her nephew, the brother's uh, uh son he was uh, around seven years old when she died and she adored this kid and i know about this because uh she was a pop singer she had lots of uh, videos interviews and family videos that where i could see the love she had for her family so and mihala is not me is a sister-in-law then she continues she, uh, who they did everything for her Mother, father, they are in-laws, Botoshan. So the way how here is separated, and mommy, daddy, and then mother, father, Botoshan. So they are the other parents, his parents. Botoshan is his husband, uh, her husband city, which is a little bit uh, far away than where her parents they live. Dana, uh, sister-in-law, George, uh, husband, brother-in-law, children. She didn't mention how many go there. You did everything for me and all the others. You've been kind to me. And then she said, my babe, my basic signs, my babes. So here is unclear if she referred to her child or only the husband, but uh, reading other statements uh, in, the, in the case, she referred to her husband six times and then she includes a ch child she wanted so much in her life for years, trying in vitro, only once together with her husband. So the red flag, she couldn't uh, stand herself physically. That day she realized suddenly, I don't, I, I don't like myself. This is an image from interior of her house. I'm not going to show all of them, but everywhere you can see picture of herself. 
for some, and there were mirrors also in the house. Even this one is, uh, it was a picture with her. So for someone who cannot stand herself uh, physically, uh, you don't have pictures with you. And uh, before I show you a few seconds interview, her last video interview, uh, I watch her videos since she was a teenager and she started to, to be a singer till the, her last video. And uh, plus the, what the family uh, provided for me. She never wear too much makeup. She never had any plastic surgery. And you'll see that she always, in her last interview, because everyone said, you are so beautiful. How do you maintain yourself? Uh, you do want to uh, change something about you? And she said, no. Though she could afford uh, changing everything she wanted about her, she wasn't interested. So in the last video, and I'm going to Stop share this to sh go to the video. Give me a second. Here. This is uh, her last video interview, not long before her death. So uh, it was a radio interview and the moderator asked her, so many women, they want to know how come you keep yourself so young, so beautiful, uh, and, uh, you know, every time everyone who interviewed her, they asked her about her natural beauty. And she didn't believe in plastic surgery and things like that. Uh, I apologize, the interview is in Romanian. Uh, so I'm going to, to translate. He said, oh, he says, oh, so many women, they want to know how you, uh, you keep yourself beauty. And she says, beauty is relative. Everything comes from inside. So she didn't put a price on her appearances, yeah? And she said, if I compare myself to someone in the street, as you see her hand, because on all her video interviews, including her husband interviews and statements, I done, I analyze non-verbally. So she's pointing in front, uh, referring to any average woman in the street. And she said, maybe if I compare with, you know, an average or below average woman, yeah, I might look better. But if I compare myself with the divas from here or the Hollywood and her, uh, her hand goes arm goes to the back. So that is behind her, she, she's not interested. She said, I think um, they look better than me, but I like she doesn't care. You see, I don't care. This is from interior, beauty is from interior. So watching her appearances, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to show you another screen. She never tried, ever tried to cover anything about herself. Uh, give me a second. I'm trying to see where are my other videos because I saved them all. Does someone knows how to, I can get to all my screens. Okay, so share screen. How do I have all the content? No. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She never, she never covered her body parts, nor the face, not excessive makeup, nothing. Everything she was exposing herself, she never tried. She was asking in interview if she wants to, you know, uh, increase her uh, breast size. She didn't even wear uh, push bras. So nothing, the way how she was dressed, from mini skirt, from revealing clothes, to long skirts or pants or classic business dress. She never tried to cover herself in any way. So it wasn't like physically, I cannot stand myself. Psychologically, that doesn't, doesn't, uh, uh, sorry about that. That doesn't, uh, sorry, I lost my 
PowerPoint now. Sorry. Can someone help me with a... I lost my PowerPoint. Uh, can some... Uh, Nawaz, can you help me where I can find my PowerPoint? I have lots of pictures about when she bought her uh, dress in the street. She never tried to hide anything about her body. Now, the interesting part, this is not my PowerPoint. Yeah, it is. Okay. I apologize, I need some water. So that for me was a question mark, a reason to, su to commit suicide in such a violent way by taking a powerful a poison because uh, you couldn't uh, stand yourself physically didn't prove anything from behind from her life so for me that was was a fake a simulated suicide note let's go further as i mentioned before her husband mentioned that uh, in august the end of august he found that uh, written suicide note there were two pages almost, I'll show only part of them. So, I'm gonna translate. And it started in a positive note. God gifted me without that. What is in uh, uh, red is what I try to tr translate into English. And what I highlighted in yellow is, uh, the social interaction, who she introduces. The most beautiful and clean, that meaning innocent, without the sin soul in the world, babe of mine. The biggest and wonderful gift, our baby, the best and most sacrificed parents in the world, dear brother, dear nephews, relatives, friends. So going further, what do we have? We have a social introduction, which this social introduction in a written note or actually even verbally is telling you the order of priority who is the most important person in your life. So according to that paragraph, the husband is first. His nickname was Babe. And she uses a possessive pronoun mind. Child is little baby plus the possessive pronouns ours. So the husband is included. Parents. As I mentioned, she loves, she adores her parents. She refused to stay in the United States where she, uh, a millionaire proposed to her only to be close to her parents. So she wasn't interested in anything else than to be close to her parents. But here she identified them as a class, not identified individually and no possessive pronouns. Brother and nephew also as a class, not name, plus the adjective dear. She show affection for her brother. She loved her brother. Then she is a class also relatives. And so this is a positive emotion in this thing. What she's, and this is a very important part. I do not deserve them. And I put they, them in Romanian is plural for feminine. I do not know what to do with them, how to take care of them, how to be useful to them. So in the Romanian language, them has a masculine, for plural, has a masculine and a feminine. She was an educated woman, though she was a singer, she has education, she would have education. But grammarly, how it was written is incorrect. When I say my, how do I do with all the gifts, like from God, if I put them all in one class, even that in Romanian language has to be masculine, not feminine. So that is another big question mark. Uh, the correct way, the grammar correct is A. And she, uh, her uh, linguistic um, style was grammar, uh, grammarly correct. And she says, I do not deserve them. Them, 
can be people, can be gifts, can be objects. Who is the audience? Is uh, telling to herself or is uh, uh, telling someone else? We don't know. And this is a very interesting part. I am helpless as a woman. She didn't mention woman, like an adjective. Unworthy, a woman with complexes. Where that is the word in Romanian. It's like kind of insecurity. So here I, I give the definition of uh, uh, from the Oxford uh, Dictionary for the complexes. I have a million defects and this make me think this is highlighted by me, that I, uh, you understand this, I must uh, to stop here, dot, dot, dot my life. That is the ink which was on the, uh, on the paper and we assume is the word with my life. Romanian context, when I say helpless, is meaning I'm good for nothing. No explanation for the negative adjective about her self-image. And in the video, I mentioned that her husband gave 10 days after her funeral, he used the same wording. It seems that this was her role re uh, referring to her life. So it had must to stop here, the same language. He uses the same language linguistically for something that he doesn't know exists. Only in August, he said that he found it. And even if we are married, we, my husband and I, we still have our personal expression, linguistic expressions, which they don't apply in this case. Uh, this is something that we don't do every day. My life has to stop here. So that for me was a red flag entirely. So here I have a video with him. And of course, I analyze his body language and allow me to stop sharing to see I have it now. I learn how to do it. Uh, okay. Uh, here it is. And he, for those which they speak Romanian, is uh, is easy to see. This is her husband. For me, he's the main sus suspect. He uses the same wording. It must stop here, her life. So, and then in August, he says that, uh, oh, I found this letter. I didn't know it existed. Now, another thing I can uh, show to you, give me a second to go back to my PowerPoint. Okay, share screen. And I don't know how much time I have, so I'm going to be fast. Okay. She said, uh, she continues uh, the letter and I'm going to mention, I'm thinking, I think actually present tense four times, I have to stop here. I must stop here my life. Uh, I'm unforgiven. My mood, my frame of mind, she underlined it. And yet, though everything is perfect for me, everyone loved me, I must stop here. What is interesting is the word think. When someone uses the word think, it means a decision is not taken. Myself, I thought of breaking the bank so many times. I think of that. Did I break it? No. I'm going to rob the bank? No. I'm thinking, yes. So many we think of illegal things. Though we never do it. So the word think in a suicide note doesn't show decision. The suicide note wasn't dated, so we don't know when it was, but mentioning the child, we assume it was between the uh, for one year in, within that birth, since the birth of the child till her death. Another interesting thing is 
She mentioned her parents again as a class, but she identified individually her uh, in-laws and their place. And she gives direction her child to be there with her in-laws for a period of time. They didn't mention why and how long. Here, she gives direct uh, instructions to her husband to uh, do whatever he wants, you know, sell everything, don't forget about the money and the bank and even the euro account, okay? And now she's addressing again to her parents with the instructions. Her parents again identify as a class, but though she loved them so much, they instruct her to love her husband. And then she gives the directive to her parents and brother to move forward. And she ends these uh, uh, instructions by imploring them, please help my husband. He done everything for me, though nobody knows what he did for her, for the sake of our child and Mikhaitza, the nephew. And I'm going to stop the sharing and uh, explain why for me, this is a red flag, even the suicide note might be a forgery. Uh, is not her real suicide note. So in the SMS, the day of her death, she had a reason, a motive as it's called. She couldn't stand herself physically. In this uh, written suicide note, there are other reasons she killed herself. Uh, analyzing the content of both, we see that there is uh, a termination. She doesn't include her parents as much as she includes her husband. And I'm going to write, uh, sorry, to, to mention that uh, some of the researches that then when you have a suicide, a fake suicide note, a fabricated one, you mention yourself more in that note. Psychologically speaking, the motives for suicide, they don't correspond to what, uh, to each other. There are too many. You cannot realize in one day that you cannot stand yourself physically, being an adult, I don't speak about a teenager, and then commit suicide. Uh, the researches to determine if uh, a suicide note was uh, genuine or fabricated, uh, there are lots of them, is not yet uh, a certain methodology. And this is what I try to do. If I don't know if this is a, a genuine one, if she's the author, the victim is the author of a suicide note, let me go back into her history, into psychological autopsy, to see if her lifestyle, her behavior, her personality matches what she calls the suicide. And they don't, actually they don't. And this was my presentation, thank you.